G'day guys, Tools20 here and welcome to the very first episode of Marble Mountain. For those of you who are scratching their heads and wondering why they're seeing a new series on my channel, well, I'm sort of scratching my head too. I probably should be finishing uh, another series rather than starting up a brand new one because, you know, God knows I don't have the time to start a new series, but I certainly have the inspiration too and that's, I guess, the real reason why I've started this series. But what it's all about and where what is the direction of this series and why I've started it. So I'm going to get through all of that in the time lapse. This time lapse goes for about eight minutes and then I'm going to go and do a live play and do a real fly through of the map so you get a really good idea of where everything sits and my ideas for how it's going to look. It's a really lovely looking map, I must say. I'm really, really happy with how it turned out and I really am excited to show you what the general plan is for this series because it is quite unique and really different to what I've ever done in any of my other series. So this map, I created this map by downloading a map from the Steam Workshop. The base map is actually Emerson Island by Apple and if you like the look of this base map that you're seeing right now then go and check it out. I've left a link in the description so go and check that out if you want to. Otherwise, the edited version of the map that I'm creating right now will be up in the Steam Workshop really soon. I'll let you know when all that is good to go. So, this series. Why am I starting a new series? Um, let me tell you, I actually have been planning this series for about seven months. Like, a really long time. Well before Border Town was even an idea in my head. And the idea behind this series is to create a very realistic looking environment but only using just a tiny weeny bit of custom assets. Everything else is going to be completely vanilla and the mods I use are going to be the mods that I just cannot live without. The bare essential. Move it, find it, uh, plot the growables, just the bare essential. And the reason why I'm choosing to do a series like this is because I've always had a problem with the fact that I can't share my maps or my save games with people. So I've been sharing my save games with my patrons for a while, but I've always felt like they've been pretty inaccessible because they rely so heavily on mods and so heavily on custom assets that for starters, the frame rate is just atrocious. Like all my footage is sped up, so that's why it looks so silky smooth, but it's atrocious, it's really hard to play. Uh, so it's not much fun to actually fly around that place. And also downloading all those things, it's just, it's a bit of a hassle and I've always had a bit of a problem with that. I've always thought it was a real miss not sharing my creations with people in that way. So this series is going to be a series where I'm going to be sharing the save game um, a lot more. So patrons are going to get the series, uh, the save game every single time I upload a video. And then I'll also be uploading the save game to the Steam Workshop every 10 episodes. And the reason why I'm choosing to do every 10 episodes is because uploading to the Steam Workshop can be a bit of a pain in the ass and it's also, I think that also 10 episodes is enough time for me to make enough progress on the save game to actually see some big improvements. And this is where the series gets really good. So if you are going to download the save game, you will need to download some of the mods and some of the assets that I've used. And I'm going to upload two collections to make it super easy and super accessible to people. The first mods and assets collection are all the mods and all the assets that I use when I am creating the series. And then the second one will be a light version. And that light version will only have the mods that are completely essential to run it. So they won't have mods like move it and they won't have mods like find it. It will only have mods that you actually need to run the save game. And that's the same for the assets. So really you only have to download 15 mods and assets in order to check out the save game. And because practically everything that I plopped down is vanilla, it's going to run pretty well. It's going to be a pretty smooth looking city. And I guess that's a good segue into another reason why I'm starting the series is because I do want the frame rate to be quite nice because I also just want to play the game. So when I do Springwood and when I do Border Town, my other series, the frame rate's so bad and the, the mods and assets that I use are so heavy that I'm not really playing the game anymore. I'm pretty much just plopping down assets and watching the simulation run and take really nice videos and like that's it. And I love it. I love the detail work. But I've been doing that for about two years and 
since recording all the tutorials for the new Industries DLC, which if you haven't seen them already, go and check them out because they're a good segue into this as well. But basically, I created a completely vanilla city and I had an absolute ball doing it. And the new Industrials, uh, sorry, Industries DLC is so much fun that I actually just really want to play it. Like I've barely even played the Park Life DLC, I've barely played the Mass Transit DLC. I haven't even plopped down a blimp. I don't even know what they do. It's because I've been plopping down assets and props for so long that I feel so out of touch with how the game actually operates that I really just want to play it. So that is sort of my challenge. My challenge is to create something realistic using a handful of mods and practically vanilla assets. And I will be going for a quite a detailed looking city. However, I will be using a whole bunch of different tricks in order to create that realism of a city, but then keeping the props pretty much out of the picture and making sure that the game just operates still beautifully. So one technique that I'm going to be doing is the city is going to be a big city, but very small. Does that make sense? <laughs> I think the way that this game works and the way that the, um, the developers wanted this game to sort of work is for us not to create massive looking cities. I want you to think about the way that GTA captures uh, LA in Los Santos and how they can capture all those neighborhoods and um, the rolling hills and uh, the skyline and all the industry that exists around there. And it feels like a massive city, but it's really not. Like, you miss out on so much of Los Angeles, but it still feels like a big city. And that is sort of the a bit of inspiration for this series, is sort of putting a big city feel into what is going to be quite a small city. Though it's not going to be micro, it's not going to be a tiny city, it's, it's just going to be a lot smaller than Springwood, a lot smaller than Bordertown. For those of you who are new to my channel, they are two series that are running on my channel at the moment. Springwood just evolved into an actually big city that is full of neighborhoods, full of industrial areas, multiple, multiple places that's just, it, it's just enormous. And when I first made that series, I was meant to go out into the desert and go out into the hillside and create all these towns and neighborhoods and, you know, it was, it was meant to be a lot bigger than just the city. However, I've been working on it for like a year and a half and I haven't even finished the city and that's because of the detail work that's going into it, which is fine, but it just means that I, I haven't been able to tackle a lot of the things that I've been really excited to do and that's sort of where this series comes in. It sort of picks up the pieces where I sort of left off with Springwood. And that way Springwood can focus on creating a realistic 1980s city and this series can focus on developing a whole region. You might actually notice that this map is not based on just creating one city, but this map is based on creating multiple different areas that are all interconnected. So I have rolling mountains, uh, hillsides, forests, uh, deserts, countrysides. I've designed this map so that I can really give the feeling that this is just an enormous place and that everything is going to be interconnected. But I think that's probably about it for this time lapse. I'm going to jump into the game now and I'll give you a really good look at what I've just created. So just before I get into the full map tour, those of you who are wondering about Border Town, Border Town's actually going to be up this weekend. So don't worry too much that about that series dropping off. I'm going to work on that series just as much as I've been working on my other series. If you know how I operate, I like to jump in and out of series depending on what mood I'm in, what I'm feeling like working on at the moment. And I generally sort of work on projects as I feel the motivation. At the moment, I'm pretty motivated for this series, but I'm also really motiv motivated for Border Town. So don't worry too much about that series dropping off. It's still just as much on the forefront of my mind as this one. So basically this whole map, you're going to see a, a lot of references to California. I mean, that is generally my inspiration for this countryside. Um, it features a lot of the different environments that you can sort of find along the coastline of America and um, I'll get into that very shortly. But let me introduce you to where I'm thinking about placing down the main city of uh, this region. Uh, this city has no name so far, so if you've got any city names, do let me know. 
It's going to be quite large, but at the same time, it only takes up about three to four squares, which isn't a huge area for a big city. And um, I'm going to keep it quite small, but big at the same time. So when I say that, skyscrapers, uh, neighborhoods, industry, but in terms of how big the neighborhoods are and how big the industry is, it's going to be somewhat small. And it's going to feature a lot of interesting things too. This city is going is actually right next to the map edge, and I've done that because because this is like the coastline and this is where the uh, water is going to sit. I think that is just a perfect looking ocean, and it means then I actually have a lot of space on the other side to create uh, a lot more going on rather than just wasted space for ocean. So that's why I've done it like that. So if you do download this map, you're going to need 81 tiles because I'm pretty sure that is where, <laughs> that is like the limit unless you have 81 tiles and that doesn't give you much space to build a city. So let's start around the coastline. The coastline features mostly these mountains and hillsides that meet these beaches and this ocean. Uh, there's also this really lovely uh, stretch of highway that creeps along the ocean too. Uh, diving in and out of these mountains and through these tunnels too. Uh, lovely Bay Bridge by Biskwigglehausen, which I've been dying to place down for ages. And along the other side, again, the same highway that stretches around. It's really quite an expansive highway and it, yeah, I think it's got some really great places and some awesome, awesome locations where, we've got, where I'm going to be placing down some uh, small towns as well that will have some particular features, whether they feature something to do with industries or a park or uh, just a tourist destination, we'll have to see. So like I was saying, this whole map features a lot of different environments. We've seen a lot of the coastline now and um, I'm going to take you up to the main feature, which is Marble Mountain. So Marble Mountain is the peak of this whole map. It is an enormous mountain. It's so enormous that it is actually hitting the the limits of the game that is <laughs> that is as high as I'm allowed to go up so I might actually have to drop it down just a touch so I've got a little bit of space to play with but basically this mountain sits at the top of this whole environment which is what I wanted I wanted there to be this real focal point being the mountain and as you can see there's just so many different environments down there we've got we've got hillsides we've got mountains we have uh, countryside we have deserts and then over this side is this pine forest, which I'm going to go into right now. So down the edge of the mountain, we'll probably end up having some sort of small village. And um, going into the forest, I can imagine I'm going to start probably building uh, a lot of forestry industry as well. And probably some small little towns that are going to snake its way around this um, hillside. Like I said, a variety of different environments. Even like the mountains are different depending on which environment you're in. So these are much smaller but a lot more rocky mountains here and um, some hillsides too. And as we start getting out of the forest, we get into um, some canyons and some more forest. And, um, and then we sort of start getting to places where it's a little bit more sparse and all of a sudden we're into the desert. So, you know, obviously forests and deserts don't meet exactly like that but you know in terms of what I want to achieve in this series there needs to be like these elements where forest and desert meet and where uh, countryside meets the ocean it's you know I think it still works and I, I, I do actually really like the way that it uh, sort of works in that way and that's why I've used so many mountains as well because the mountains do act as a really nice barrier I guess for the different environments but at the same time there's still a little bit of forest there which is like a really cool thing because it makes just really connects the whole map together when you can see the different environments so the desert's quite unique it's um, quite a very nice detailed deserts uh, even for a desert it's kind of detailed uh, it's got this area around here is quite desolate and uh, quite flat Whereas this side of the desert, there is a lot more uh, canyons and mountains and it's a little bit more uh, hilly, I guess. 
So every environment's different. Even if it's in the desert, it's still quite different. Even around this side, it's quite different. That's sort of the idea behind it. I wanted there to be multiple environments to work in. So that's, it really gives the big picture of how everything ties in together. And, you know, without doing too many spoilers, that is sort of the map. And you can actually get your hands on the map so super soon, but you actually have to do me a favor and you do need to give me a little bit of advice because the whole reason why this map isn't available to you guys right now is because I've found like a little bit of a glitch and a bit of a problem and I do need your help. So this area here features um, a few props and it is quite detailed. And when I was placing down these props in map editor, they um, were doing this weird thing when I load up the save game and when I scrolled in and out, they would disappear. You can actually see this tree here that's floating in the air and as I zoom in, it disappears. That's what all the props were doing. So I actually really want to upload this map as soon as possible, but the thing that's stopping me is the fact that every pro prop that I place down disappears. I've placed all these down within the save game and if you download the map, you're not going to get any of these props. So if you've got any advice as to why that might be happening, can you let me know because I would love to upload this map, but that's the only thing that's stopping me at the moment. I'm going to keep working on it. I'm sure I'll figure it out, but we'll just have to wait and see. Um, but that is pretty much it with this map. Like, uh, there's so much more I want to kind of show you, but I am just going to leave it there so that you can get a lot more of it throughout the rest of um, the series, I guess. If you have any questions or suggestions about this series, then please leave them in the comment section below. I'm still searching for a name for the city. I have nothing in my brain. I'm just stuck for ideas. So if you've got any ideas for city names, then, then shoot me a message and who knows, that might be chosen at some stage. But that is pretty much it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're excited for this series and I look forward to sharing the next one with you. I'll see you later. Thank you.